Thank you for watching part 2 of Upgrading to VMware vSphere 5, performing an orchestrated upgrade for your entire VMware vSphere 4.x environment. First of all, let's notice that it's downloading patch definitions for the ESX server. Also, each of our ESX servers in inventory is still a version 4.1 ESX server. What I would like to point out, however, is that we're now using the vSphere client version 5.0 connected to the vCenter server version 5.0. So the very next task is going to be to create an upgrade baseline that will allow us to upgrade each of our ESX servers to version 5.0. In order to do that, I'm going to suggest we click on Home and we go to Update Manager. What we need to do first is go to the ESXi Images tab of the Update Manager and import an ESXi image. This is really, really easy. All we need to do is locate our ESXi ISO image, and that's called VMware VMVisor Installer. Click on Next. Install and Ignore. And it's importing our VMware VMVisor Installer, our ESXi ISO image. Our upload was successful, and it's going to prompt us to automatically create a baseline using the ESXi image. This is an upgrade baseline. And I'm going to call it Upgrade to ESXi 5. And in one step, we have both imported an ESXi image and created an upgrade baseline. Let's go back to Home, then to Hosts and Clusters, and select our cluster. With the cluster selected, I'd like to select the last tab on the right, Update Manager, and choose Attach. I'm going to choose my upgrade baseline. All right, and it says it's unknown and 0% compliant, so we'll choose scan. The scanning step isn't actually necessary. You already knew that all of the ESX servers here were not compliant with the version 5 upgrade. What we're going to do now is called remediation. In other words, we're going to perform an orchestrated upgrade of each one of our ESXi servers without interrupting any of our production virtual machines. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can get this started, but my favorite is to actually select the cluster and right-click and choose Remediate from the list. By starting from the inventory, I'm absolutely certain what element I'm remediating, and in this case, it's the entire cluster. I'm going to select my baseline, and I'm going to select which hosts it will be applicable to. I am going to accept the terms of the license agreement. I'm going to remove installed third-party software that is incompatible with the upgrade, even though I know there is none installed. I'm going to do this immediately. We're not going to change the VM power state, and we're going to allow the update manager to retry every five minutes for three times. It's also a good idea to disable removable media devices connected to virtual machines. This will enable the virtual machines to vMotion in the event that somebody has left an ISO image connected to one of them. I'm going to disable DPM. I'm going to disable high availability admission control if it is enabled. I'm going to disable fault tolerance if it is enabled. You can, if you choose to, enable parallel remediation for hosts in the selected clusters. This means that if you have sufficient resources, you may remediate more than one host at a time, or more than one host might be placed offline at a time to upgrade to vSphere 5. 
and I'm going to choose to migrate powered off and suspended virtual machines to other hosts in the cluster. Ready to go. And let's watch it work for a minute. In order for remediation to be completed for all of the ESX hosts in the cluster, each one of these powered on virtual machines will have to be vMotioned at least once. Right now it's already placed two of three ESX hosts into maintenance mode. That means all of the remaining virtual machines are running on ESX 101. When it's finished remediating ESX 102 and 103, it will vMotion all of the virtual machines from 101 to 102 or 103 and then remediate 101. We'll check that out when that happens. Now you'll notice that both ESX 102 and ESX 103 are noted as disconnected. That means that all of the packages have been uploaded to the servers themselves and are presently being installed. Each server will be rebooted and then brought back online and then ESX 101 will automatically be upgraded as well. This process can take quite some time. Depending on the speed of your hardware and network connections, somewhere between 10 and 25 minutes is not an unusual time frame per ESX server which is being upgraded. Because we're upgrading two ESX servers concurrently, we could probably expect between 10 and 25 minutes for both ESX servers to be reported as back online. Okay, for anybody who's been paying close attention, You'll notice that we requested a start time at 1.27 p.m., and it actually got started at 1.27 p.m., and it's now 1.47 p.m. That puts us at the 20-minute mark since we started the remediation process. We'll be expecting these two ESX servers to come back online any minute now, and there they are. ESX 103 is back online and in maintenance mode. ESX 102 is back online and in maintenance mode. Both ESX 102 and 103 are exiting maintenance mode and installing the new vSphere HA agents. Remember, currently all of our virtual machines are running on ESX 101. So what we expect to see happen as soon as these two servers, ESX 102 and 103, are fully functional again, is that all of the running virtual machines, including the vCenter server, which is orchestrating this upgrade procedure, will be vMotioned from ESX 101 in order to allow that to be remediated. And here it goes. All of the virtual machines are now being vMotioned. And now ESX 101 will be placed into maintenance mode. Now that ESX 101 is in maintenance mode, the upgrade process is going to begin. And for those of you who are extremely conscientious about time, we should see ESX 101 come back online any second now. In fact, it came back online while I was talking. We began the remediation process at 1.27 p.m. with ESX 102 and 103. They took 20 minutes until 1.47 p.m., at which time ESX 101 began its remediation process. ESX 101 also took exactly 20 minutes until 2.07 p.m., and it is now coming back online. And ESX 101 is back online and the HA agents have been installed. If we select the cluster view and the update manager tab we can see that we're now 100 percent compliant with our upgrade baseline. That means that all of our ESX servers have been upgraded to ESX 5.0. The reason that each of the ESX servers in our cluster is displaying a configuration issue is simply because we have an insufficient number of vSphere HA heartbeat data stores configured. We'll deal with that at a later time. One last item on the agenda before we leave. Let's not forget that snapshot that we created to protect our vCenter server. Select your vCenter server from the inventory. Go to the snapshot manager and choose delete all. 
In VMware context, delete all is really to commit the snapshots and move forward in a continuous progression, leaving our upgrade in place. Remember, snapshots are not actually a proper form of backup. They will continue to grow for as long as they exist. Snapshots which have been in place for a long time, or those which have been in place when major system changes have taken place, will be much larger and will take longer to commit. Thanks for watching our video on upgrading from VMware vSphere 4 to vSphere 5. I'm John Borhek and I'm Chief Solutions Architect for VM Sources Virtualization. Give me a call at 215-764-6442, extension 1001, or email me, john at vmsources.com. Goodbye.